Oh, hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and can't believe in things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a very pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things, and there is a question in that title because it's time for a rant. It's been a while since I've had a good old-fashioned rant, and I think it is warranted in this episode of Sunday Stuff and Things. But as always, we have many topics to discuss in the Sunday Stuff and Things, including upcoming videos, things that you can look forward to, things that you can look forward to in Stuff and Things, working and Stuff and Things plays. I'll talk briefly about our trip to Richland, Washington, and then we're gonna have rant time. Many things have happened throughout the week that have annoyed me, and I think it's time to talk about them. And then, of course, we will get to your questions, comments, and feedback in hashtag ask stuff and things. So let's get into it. Alrighty, what can you look forward to on stuff and things, working, and stuff and things plays? Well, this coming week, we will have the revisited episode of Solani Aged Burly Flake. One of my favorite all-time blends, and I hadn't gotten it for a very long time, and I was wondering, how I still thought about it, if the formula had changed, if it seemed the same as it did when I had it all those years ago. Wait and see the revisited episode. Things maybe have changed a little bit, so definitely check this out. This video will be posting this Wednesday on Stuff and Things, Monday on Patreon if you are a Patreon supporter. The next video that will be on Stuff and Things is going to be an update on a very popular video that I posted over eight years ago. And that video was how to attempt to improve your handwriting. And a lot of people have watched that throughout the years. And a lot of people have asked me, have I kept up with my practice with the Spencerian version of cursive? Am I still trying to write in cursive? How is my penmanship now? Eh. <laughs> I still have kept up trying to write in cursive. I haven't made a close study of these manuals for a while, and you will see where I am if you watch that video. It's going to be how to attempt to improve your handwriting eight years later. Then I'm working. We have a short coming up this Monday, and on Stuff and Things Plays every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, the Tears of the Kingdom, the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom series is continuing. So lots to look forward to. Be sure to check it out. So, I posted a video last week of our trip to Richland, Washington. We were there for a film festival, and we thought it would be cool since it was in the state to drive there. Of course, it's still a pretty long drive. It's over four and a half hours away from Bellingham, Washington to Richland, Washington. For those of you who don't know, ugh, I guess I have a map up here I can show you. Richland is right around this area. So, it's south, like very near the border. Um, it's on the Columbia River. It's the Tri-Cities area, Richland, Kennewick, and Pasco. Yes. And that's where we were. It was cool. It was an interesting place. We tried to do some touristy things. We tried to go tour the uh, shutdown Reactor B at the Hanford Nuclear Power Plant. We accidentally ended up trying to get on to the actual nuclear site and got turned away by a very nice soldier. Um, but lots of good stuff happened during that trip. I was still sick pretty much the entire time during the trip, and so eh, it wasn't as good as it should have been, probably. And the hotel we were in was kind of crappy, too. It seemed good from the pictures. It had a lot, a lot of facilities, things that you could do, and there was like there was a cool river walk. You could walk around the Columbia River or walk along the Columbia River. But the room itself, it was kind of this converted old motor inn style hotel. And so there's like courtyard with a pool in the middle and all the rooms, like you could just hear everything everywhere. Um, there was just no privacy and no quiet at all. And then it had the thing they do sometimes where the sink is in the main room. And so they had the toilet and the shower in, in the bathroom and then the sink was in the main room. And so, you know, if I was trying to get up early and get ready or something, I would wake Diamond up and there was just, I don't know, it wasn't great. Things were great. Oh, and the shower. It had this thing where, oh, this is cool because it's just this um, detachable shower head that you can put on to a little bracket and then you could, should be able to shower that way. But as soon as you turn the shower on, the shower head would just start rotating around and there was no way to get it to actually stay and 
and shoot water down upon you, which is kind of the point of a shower. So you're in there showering and you're like moving around as the shower head is moving around. I don't know, it wasn't great, but the trip was pretty fun and you should check out that vlog. The vlogs don't get a lot of views typically, but I posted it last week and it's interesting, so you should check it out. All in all, good trip. Wish I had been not sick during the trip and there was a lot of driving. We actually hit horrible traffic on the way back in Snoqualmie Pass. It was just bumper to bumper, stop and go. Uh, it took forever to get through the pass. So I think the return trip was almost six hours of driving where it should have been about four and a half. Anyway though, fun stuff. All right, and now it's time for the rant. And here, here, let me get the thumbnail going. That's a good thumbnail for a rant video. Lots of horrible things are happening in the world right now, and I don't typically talk about world events or politi politics on the channel, and I'm not going to do that this week, but I have been disturbed by things that are going on in the world, and since I can't really talk about those things on this channel, or I don't want to, I am displacing that anger and frustration, and I know this is the case, but I am displacing that on other things in my life and getting probably more irritated and more angry about those things than I should be getting, but I know it's a classic case of displacement, and that's fine. I'm aware of it, and now you get to hear about it. So basically this week, many things have been annoying me and many things have gone wrong. Primarily, my mom was in the hospital. That was not fun. I'm not annoyed at my mom, obviously, but she got really sick and had to go to the emergency room. There was this whole thing where she was having um, kidney failure, just all sorts of things going on. She's okay now, just to let you know, but it sucks when someone, when you're a family member is in the hospital, it sucks to have to be worrying about them all the time. And that has definitely not helped my mood this week. So that's the first thing, mom in the hospital, that's not fun, that annoys me, that makes me kind of angry. And again, a lot of this anger is displaced, but I'm aware of it, so it's okay. Number two, people can't drive. And I am not a super road ragey kind of person, but sometimes the complete inability for other people to think about other people or to just follow the rules of the road properly drive me insane. And I have one particular example, and this is something that has annoyed me for a long time. There is a particular roundabout or traffic circle, as you might call them in the UK. Now, we didn't used to have any roundabouts anywhere in the county where I am from, but starting about, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, they started putting in a lot of roundabouts. And I was kind of skeptical about them at first, but after I got used to them, I realized that they made a lot of sense. They actually really help traffic flow properly if used correctly, and that's the big thing. When they first started putting them in, a lot of people didn't seem to get what they were supposed to do, you know? If there's a gap, you go in. You don't have to sit there and wait. Even if you see a car, as long as there's room for you, you get into the roundabout. You yield to the people who are already in the roundabout if you're about to enter it, but other than that, you just go. It makes traffic flow much more smoothly. There is a particular roundabout that is in the city of Ferndale, which is north of Bellingham. We work in Ferndale quite a bit, and we have been working in Ferndale quite a bit. And usually when I get to this roundabout, it's about 7.10, 7.15 in the morning. And that is a horrible time because you go towards the roundabout, to this part, to this side of the roundabout, there is a high school, Ferndale High School. And so all the traffic of people who have dropped their kids off is trying to come from the high school and get onto the roundabout. They have a yield sign. The people going this way, the way I'm going, trying to get through the roundabout out to the other side, they do not have a yield sign. You're supposed to yield to the people who are already in the traffic circle in the roundabout, but that, other than that, you're supposed to go. The people here trying to come out from the high school are supposed to yield. Now, if everybody did that, traffic would flow very smoothly because even though there are a lot of people trying to get through, if they are able to get through, then that would get unclogged. There wouldn't be this whole line of cars waiting. But what people are doing, and they think they're being, being kind, being considerate, is that they're going through, they'll let one car will go through, the car behind them will stop, 
and then they'll motion the people who are waiting from the high school to go in, even though those people have a yield sign. They're supposed to wait. All that does is clog everything up behind, and instead of meaning, you know, you're not going to have an uninterrupted flow of traffic. If people were able to flow through, then there would be a gap, and then those people who are waiting from the school would have that gap, and they'd be able to get into the roundabout. Instead, when people are stopping and treating it like a stop sign, then one person goes, then another person goes, then one person goes here, another person goes here, and it backs the traffic up forever behind. They're not using the roundabout perfectly. So this always annoys me. It always drives me crazy. I end up beep beep honking at people if they wait, because I'm like, you're not supposed to be waiting. You're supposed to be going. You're holding up traffic. You're making everything just fall apart. So this is the preamble for the story. The other day, I was trying to get into that roundabout. There was a whole line of cars. People were letting people come in, even though they weren't supposed to be. They were letting people come in at the who had the yield sign. The person in front of me stopped, let somebody in. Then they went. I, uh, yeah, and then I was about to go, and a woman who was coming in from the school, who had a yield sign, who was supposed to wait for me, she just started going. I slam on my, bra my brakes, I slam on the horn, I give her a look, I point to the yield sign. She turns to me, and she had the most cow-like face I have ever seen in my life. Just completely expressionless, expressionless. No hint of intelligence on her face whatsoever. She turns and looks at me. And I go, look, there's a yield sign. I'm supposed to be able to go now. So I start to go again, and she just slams out. And I had to slam on my brakes. She would have smashed into my car. She had a yield sign. I had already honked at her. I told her I was going, and she didn't care. She was just going, literally was going to smash into my car. I slammed on the brakes. She missed me by inches. She would have smashed into the front of my vehicle. So of course, because of all this history with the roundabout and the fact that she was completely flouting the rules of the road and not doing anything that she should have been doing, I laid on the horn for a good 30 seconds. I gave her some obscene gestures. I got near her again, because she was going the same way as me, and I went and passed her, because she was going to be turning. I look into her car again, and again, this cow face lacking any semblance of human intelligence whatsoever. And it just made me so incensed. I actually had to like, calm down and breathe a little bit. Obviously, in the greater scheme of things, this doesn't matter at all. I'm never going to see this person again, but it's just indicative of this general lack of understanding of how you should move about in the world. And of course, like I mentioned, it is displacement. I am, I am annoyed about certain things that are happening in the world, and I'm displacing it onto this cow-faced woman. That wasn't the only thing. When I was on the freeway going home that day, I was driving in the fast lane going probably close to 80 miles an hour, which is technically speeding, but I was going with this flow of traffic. When somebody comes up behind me just blazingly fast, they get behind me, they start moving back and forth, flashing their lights, they want to get through. Like, I'm already going close to 80, the speed limit's 70, you don't need to be getting past me. There wasn't room for me to get over anyway. They go around me onto the shoulder of the freeway. It's gravel. It's not safe whatsoever. They're going over 90 miles an hour. They slam past me. They slam and weave in and out onto the shoulder. Just You will die eventually, or more likely, you will kill somebody else driving like a freaking maniac that way. So there you go. Driving. Next, yesterday, I get a phone call. It's from an 800 number that I don't recognize. I hear a message. It is someone with an accent, someone from a call center, I'm assuming in India. So that automatically makes me think this is fake, it's fraud, whatever. But I hear the message and it says, your card, my bank card, has had fraudulent or suspicious activity. Please call this number back. And I'm thinking, I don't think that's right. Usually I have a local bank. Usually they will call me if something is going on, but I check my email. I check my text messages. I do have an email from my uh, bank's fraud prevention, and I have a text message from my bank's fraud prevention. So I call the number back. 
someone with a pretty strong accent. It's not always difficult to understand what's being said, but they basically were saying, okay, we have all these transactions that seem fraudulent. Were these you? And they start reading off. It was from a company called SeatGeek. SeatGeek. And it was for somebody trying to buy football tickets, like American football. I think it was the Jets versus... I can't remember who, but it was supposed to take place in, you know, in New Jersey, and it was thousands of dollars. There were seven different transactions for, you know, over $300 each, and I think the the grand total was like $2,400 or something like that. And so I'm going, I'm, I, I'm getting, I had gotten off work, I wanted to do the things that I needed to do and then have a little moment to relax, and basically this whole process took hours and it still isn't over. But I was on the phone with this person. He's naming off, okay, so Seat Geek, this amount, was this you? I'm like, no, none of the ones that are from Seat Geek were me. Okay, this one from Seat Geek with this amount of money, was this you? I'm like, no, none of them were from me. They're all fraudulent. I had to go through every single one itemized. And he's like, okay, now call this number. And I was suspicious the whole time, thinking, is, is he going to want any personal information? He didn't ask for any personal information. And then the number, number he gave me was my actual bank's number. So I called them, got their fraud prevention person, had to go through the whole thing again. I don't know what this first call was even for. And they said, okay, well, we have to file a dispute with Visa um, and tell them that we're not going to honor these charges. And you'll have all, all the money back right away. Basically, the bank will will front you the money that was taken out of your account, and then once the dispute is over, then Visa gives them the money back once the dispute has been settled. And it's just important that if you get a letter or something from Visa, you have to respond to that letter, otherwise they may try to take the money back, yada, yada, yada. This is obviously fraud, this wasn't you, we understand that. So we're gonna take all this out, uh, all these charges off. And I had looked at my bank statement and saw you know, over, it was like $2,400, like I said. I hadn't actually had that much in my checking account, so they took a bunch out of my savings account and put it in my checking account. And I was like, okay, this is annoying. And there were all these overdraft fees, too, because they kept, every time a charge would go through, they would throw money from my savings into there, and they would charge me an overdraft fee every single time. Like, so this is all going to get taken care of. They said yes. I checked later in the evening, and all the charges were gone. And so I took the money that they had taken from my savings account and put it in my checking account. I put it back in my savings account, thinking, okay, this is going to be resolved. It should be all fine. I can't use my bank card. I need to go shopping and run errands the next day, today actually. But luckily there was a branch open on a Saturday and I could go in and get a bank card right away. So that's where I left it. It took up a bunch of my time. It was annoying, but I thought, okay, we're all good. Come today, I go to the bank and I get my new card. Um, that's all good, that happens. But then I check my bank statement and all the charges are back again. And they have all gone through again and again, charge me overdraft fees for each, uh, each transaction that was trying to go through. So now I have this huge morass of all these transactions, all of these fees, I called them again and said, what's going on? I thought this was supposed to be taken care of. I'm like, oh, it's the weekend, so I guess you have to wait till Monday. He's like, well, they said it was fine yesterday and all those charges were gone yesterday. Now they're all back again. Like, am I actually going to be getting this money back? What's going on? Just a huge morass and a huge mess. And typically in the past, when I've had suspicious charges on my card, and I tell them they're suspicious, they immediately get rid of them and there's no problem whatsoever. So I don't know why it is this huge rigmarole that I'm having to go through right now. None of these problems really matter that much other than my mom being in the hospital. But I'm annoyed. I am annoyed this week. And now you have to hear about it. All right, gang. <laughs> it's been a while since we had a nice rant like that, but now it is time to hear your rantings in hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. I keep twitching. It's, there's so much anger. I need to get rid of it. If you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. You can also write to me via Patreon if you are a Patreon supporter and go right to the front of the line. You can hit that super thanks button right under this video and go right to the front of the line. First of all, we have a super thanks from Scottum, our good friend, who says, thank you, Scottum, 
Sickness must be going around. I haven't had a pipe in two weeks recovering from something similar to what you described. The sinuses still aren't clear. Cheers and feel better soon. Thank you, Scottum. And I'm, I'm almost better. I still have a little bit of a kind of vestigial, vestigial cough going on, um, but I think I'm pretty much okay. The biggest hurdle from when I was sick was just exhaustion and body aches and like shivers and stuff. And I feel like I have my energy back as you can probably tell. Next, from at Michael Case, eight, uh, yes, 8574, this is feedback from last week's Sunday Stuff and Things. I lived on the Columbia Rivers, Columbia and Willamette Rivers on my boat for 22 years. I miss it almost every day. That's cool. So you had a houseboat and you would just cruise around the Columbia. That's very cool. Next, from at John Robinson 8549, as for Rumble, I mentioned in the last video that I was posting stuff on Rumble as well, so any video that posts on stuff and things and working will also post on Rumble. If you do a search for uh, working stuff and things for working on Rumble and then stuff and things for stuff and things on Rumble, if you prefer to watch on Rumble, you can watch there. So far, nobody's watching on Rumble, but if you want to, you can. Um, I still don't know that the, the interface is great. I tried to watch some of my videos on there and it seems like things were kind of lagging and catching, but it's an, it's an alternative to YouTube if you would rather go there. As for Rumble, it could be a good move. You'd be allowed to occasionally do an old school Sunday smoke video. I suppose, but since I'm just grabbing things off of YouTube and putting them on Rumble, I don't know that I'm gonna ever make anything specifically for Rumble, but I'll keep you posted. Okay, we're back. The card was full. I had to switch it out. Next, we have one from at Doc 6806. Welcome to my hometown, Bradley. I am a born and raised Richland resident and a pipe esser since 1987. I hate the gnats also. There are some gnats around the river, but that's to be expected. Oh yes, we do have sturgeon here. Too bad you did not have a chance to check out the educated cigar here in Richland. They carry cigars, of course, but also some new pipes and loose and tinned teas. They are a small store, but it's the only store that caters to pipes and pipe tea. They are getting new things each time I go down there, my new favorite shop. Very cool, I didn't even think to look for a pipe store there. I just assumed there probably wouldn't be one. Richland's not a huge town or anything. It is cool to hear that the sturgeon are in the river. I had noticed when I was walking by the river, a giant shape uh, coming to the surface. And I was like, I know there's sturgeon near the mouth of the Columbia, but I didn't think there were any further up because I thought with all the dams and everything that there wouldn't be any up there, but apparently there are, which is very cool. Next, we have some more feedback. Uh, this is from the Richland Washington trip vlog. And this is from at Blake's Pipes. Can't wait to see the entire film if possible. Talking about the short film. Maybe maybe uh, Diamond will want to post that somewhere for public. I think while it's on the kind of festival circuit, it's the festivals usually prefer it if you don't have it available, but whatever, we'll see. Great little town to spend some quiet time. Thank you, at Blake's Pipes. From, uh, this is our final bit of feedback from at Eric Berger, at Eric, what is this? Eric E. E. G. Ber Egbers? Eric Egbers. It's so hard with these at names now. Ah, the Y Barricade. Passed through many times as an environmental consultant in the 90s. So talking about the barricade going into the Hanford nuclear site where we uh, got turned back by a soldier. The four-lane highway was absolutely crammed with vehicles heading for work in the morning and heading home from work in the evening. The two reactors you saw on the right were actually were likely the WPPS plant cooling towers. And yeah, I knew as soon as I said that, uh, you could see the steam rising up from cooling towers in the distance and a place that we probably shouldn't be allowed to go to and we were not allowed to go to. Thanks for all the feedback, the questions and comments. Please keep that coming in. Sorry about the rant today, but I just had to do it. Hopefully I'll be more calmed down by next week. But now it is time for the very best part of the show. And that is where we thank our Patreon supporters. Remember, if you would like to support the channels on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below, and we're trying to get to $105 Patreon supporters. So if you like the content and if you would like to support more content like this in the future, please check out that Patreon link. But every week, we like to shout out those who support the channels at $25 or more a month. People like Glenn Dunnington, Jason Buckner, MD of the North, David Gaudreau, Finn O'Hagan, Ryan McFadden, 
Arcturus, Ashes of the Phoenix, and Jonathan Proctor. And of course, the maniacs, the crazy people who support the channels at $100 a month, people like Bob McGee. And we will never forget our dearly departed friend and Hall of Fame member, Peter Straub. Gang, thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned for the revisited episode for Solani Aged Burly Flake. There will be an update on how to attempt to improve your handwriting coming up the week after. Working will have a short this coming week and then a full episode the week after that. We also have Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday on Stuff and Things Plays. Uh, if you want to get all this content early, or at least the Stuff and Things content early, Patreon gets it early and ad-free every single week. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a rant-filled Sunday Stuff and Things. <sighs> Calm. I'll see you later.